you're watching the free version of this tutorial. Upgrade to premium for all footage and project and exclusive content. We're back in exercise nine, looking at screen inserts again. Now, you may think you recognize this shot from a previous exercise, but it's actually a slightly different version of the same things. And just as before, we're going to be tracking a screen insert in here. But unlike before, we're gonna take this to the next level, and we're gonna be using Mocha Pro's insert module to do the screen insertion. But the first things first, we always have to do our initial track. So we just draw our main shape in here. And I will call this one screen track and turn perspective on in the track parameters. And let's track this forwards. Here we get. Okay, looking pretty good. And we'll track this backwards now. And amazingly enough, even though we've got a lot of lighting changes and and even towards the end where we've got lots of reflections coming in. It still looks like it's tracked in pretty nicely, but obviously there's no way to tell until we put the surface on. And just as we did last time, I'm gonna use my brightness scale multiplier just to help us see where the edges actually are. Let's get us around about here before the curve on the screen. And I'll turn the grid on now just to see if that's all lining up nicely. So it's that same little trick as we saw before, having the grid on and then just bringing the surface in a little bit to see if all of the angles start to line up. I can see here they don't, so we'll just push that out a little bit there. Cool, and that's looking nice. Now for this one, we're actually going to be doing our screen insert with that curved edge. So I'm gonna make my surface a little bit bigger than the edge itself and on this side as well. Just to take into account the extra surface we're gonna to have to be covering with the, uh, with the curved edge. Okay, so let's turn off our brightness again and we'll do a straight logo insert in there just to check what's going on. Turn off my surface, turn off my grid and turn off my shape outlines. Let's play that back. Okay, and I'm pretty happy with what we've got so far. We don't have to worry about the adjust track quite yet. Okay, so now that I'm happy with my track, let's come into the insert module and see what's going on there. Now the insert module is available with Mocha Pro and it lets us create our screen inserts directly within the Mocha interface. And we can either render these out as clips afterwards or if we're using the plugin, we can render directly in the host. So let's take a look at the insert parameters to begin with. Under input, this is fairly straightforward. This is the same sort of input as we've seen previously. We have our background clip being the input clip and the insert clip being the same as the insert clip we have in our layer properties. And I can, just as we did before, import another clip and I'll use my phone screen again. It's still just a still, so we don't have to worry about any of the other stuff in that window. Moving over to the right, Mocha defaults us into the comp tab because this is more than likely where you're going to be starting. But we're going to have a look first at the source tab instead. Now with source tab, we can define a region of interest in our insert. And let's see what that looks like. If I turn off my lock aspect ratio for a second and turn these around, I'm now able to scale the screen insert within our planar surface. So this is good if you've got an image that's looking um, scaled out of proportion. We can also do fit region of interest to surface or let's reset that or fit surface to region of interest. So this will do that, uh, do that scaling for us. The next thing we're looking at is actually the comp here, which is the composite or composite. And here we can change things like the opacity of our insert. And the gain so we can change the brightness up a little bit or dampen that down and this can be quite useful if we're trying to match up a particular lighting it's not full-on color correction we can do but because it's animatable it can help uh, when we have to do any sort of brightness changes on our insert 
and we can do that directly in here without taking it out to another application. Masks we're going to come back to in a moment. So I'm going to just take my opacity down a tad so we can see some of the background there, just so we know that it's doing something. Same with the uh, same with the game, just so we know it's doing something. I'll just crank that up a little bit, and let's move over to warp. Now warp's pretty cool. As we can see, if I zoom in here, we have a curved edge to our phone screen. But currently our surface is only describing a flat, planar surface. Now with warp, what we can do is we can start to distort this up a little bit and help to curve things around. So if I show the mesh there, and I can take my level down a little bit to simplify things just so we can see what's going on. You can see I can start to warp what's going on on the screen very easily. Just undo that a few times. Cool, and turn our level up. As we turn the level up, our warp mesh gets a little bit more complicated. And level four, you can see we've got lots of separation we can we can be doing on that. But I'm just gonna bring this down to level three just to make it a little bit more manageable for our purposes right here. And what we can do with this is we can just grab this and start to warp it around a little bit. I'm gonna try and do a consistent warp across all of these edges here. So bring it down and then to the left, down to the left, down to the left until we've got our edge working there. And the same on the other side. I'm going to grab the edge here, down and to the right, down to the right, down to the right. Cool. Then let's turn our show mesh off again. And you can see we started to warp that around. And I can come in and make any little changes I have to. Yeah, I forgot to do that one there. And likewise, I didn't do this one here. Let's turn all our overlays off up at the top of the viewer. And let's play that back. Cool. And as you can see, that has taken that same mesh and added that to our track. Now, there's a few areas, especially when we get towards this here, where it starts to move quite a lot in perspective, and we're able to see things we couldn't see previously, that we're going to have to come in and keyframe our warp up a little bit. Not a problem. Come to the last good uh, frame, add a keyframe. Come to the frame of maximum distortion, which is actually the first frame on this one. Turn our mesh back on. Turn our overlays back on. And zoom in and fix our warp down to the right, down to the right, down to the right. Keep it nice and consistent. That's what we're after. Down to the right. And I always try to make my movements in two different turns. So I take it horizontally and then vertically, or vertically and then horizontally. I don't try and do a diagonal to get us in the right place. Often ends up messing about with my brain's ability to figure out what we're doing. So we end up in a bit of a mess and not being able to make those consistent moves that we need. Oops, let's turn off the surface. We don't need that right now. Cool. and turn off our mesh and play that back. All right, okay, cool. And we've got our nice curved screen going. Wonderful. And we can tweak this a little bit, but it, uh, it's beginning to take shape now. So that's our quick warp. Let's have a look at feather. Now, guess what the feather's gonna do? Yeah, let's lock this up a second. Cool, and Feather is going to just start to eat away at the edge. So this can be useful to start to match things in a little bit. But take a look down at the bottom here. You can see we've got a little bit of something happening here where the Feather and the Warp are uh, meeting up. One thing we haven't talked about is how this here isn't actually our final render. This is just a preview of what we're going to be getting. To get our final render, we come down to our render, as we saw with the Stabilize when we were doing the Autofill and just render in there. So we can render our current frame 
And what that will do is it will give us a full quality render of our result. So you can see if this fits in a little bit better. You can see we haven't got that stuff at the bottom anymore. And with the feather, I've, I've locked all of these up so we've got equal feather around all the edges. We can also do just a horizontal lock. So just the horizontal values are going to be locked together. Obviously, I'm going to have to render that out one more time. Or vertical lock with vertical values are locked together as well. Or we can do all four edges individually. I'll lock this up and just put this to 0.02. And while we're rendering stuff, let's just pop over here and turn on our motion blur as well. Because especially towards the edges, and we can't see anything because we haven't rendered it, but towards the edges of the clip duration, we should have a lot of motion blur. Come to the view and just have a look at the selected layer. You can see motion blur on the logo at the top there, and motion blur down here, but nothing on the screen itself. So obviously that's not right. As soon as I hit render with motion blur turned on in under the render, that's going to make that look a lot more realistic for us. And if I want to render all of our results out, then I can just process that forwards and Mocha will go away and just render all the frames so that we can preview what's going on. And let's just let that render out. Cool, very nice. And if we take a look at the bottom of the timeline, we can see this light blue, which shows us where we have our clips rendered. And there's nothing in the last few frames where we haven't rendered those out. So let's come to the beginning and just render that last bit out. Cool, let's play that back. Not looking too bad. A little bit of a uh, little bit of shrinkage going on at the end there. But of course, nothing a quick adjust track won't sort out. But before we do that, let's come over to our transform. Just, just going to quickly show you this. We're not going to actually do anything with it. Take, takes it out to the selected layer. And in the transform, what we can do here is we can offset our insert. So we can offset it in position, rotate it, offset the shear, perspective, and scale it as well. Additionally, we can use the 3D offset to pull our insert out or push it back in 3D space. Now, this isn't going to work very well with this particular shot, but it can be very good to get some floating text or other information coming out from where the original screen happened to be. And we can even export this offset data in the normal way if you want to use it in another application. Yeah, that was a brief diversion into the transform. We're not going to look at that too much. What I do want to do is come back to our composite, our comp. Let's have a look at our rendered one again. Oh, I'm missing out on a rendered frame somewhere at the end. Okay. Let's render that one more time. Fine. Yeah. So the big problem you'll see between our insert and the original, if I turn off processing here, we, we won't process that out, is that we have fingers that are just being cut off uh, with our screen here. So we need to mask those out because obviously we don't want the screen to be over the fingers because that, you know, gives the game away. That's not what we're after. So let's come in to our track. We'll turn off the insert by just setting the insert clip to none. And we'll lock up our screen track for the, uh, for the moment being. And I'm just going to pick one finger just for the sake of speed because once we've done one, then we know what we're doing with all of them. And I'm just going to create a new X spline around my finger. Okay, cool. And I'll call this one finger middle mask. Dash M for mask. And we could track this in, but let's see what it's going to look like if we use a pre existing track, our screen track, and see if that helps us. Oh, well, look at that. That's looking pretty good. Obviously, we're going to need to make a big change when we move in perspective. We can start to see bits of this round finger that we couldn't see before by tracking the flat screen. So let's just add a keyframe at the last good frame. Come to the point of maximum drift, which is the first frame again, not surprisingly. Let's bring that in there. Cool, and we'll see how that works on the other side. Yeah, almost the opposite problem. Again, uh, 
Yeah, so we'll add another keyframe at the last good frame, point of maximum drift, which is the other end this time, and we'll just keyframe that out. In this case, there's no point trying to use the transform here because um, what we're seeing is a completely different bit of the of the finger. We're not doing a two and a half D uh, distort on this. We're actually seeing a whole load more of the finger, so it's it's fine just to rearrange the points on that one. Okay, good. So now we've got that done. Let's unlock our screen track and put our insert clip back in. It's our phone screen. And we'll go back to the insert. Let's turn off process on the finger mid because we don't want that to be part of our render. What we do want though, if we come down to the insert properties and take a look at masks, what we do want is we want to use that mask in there. And let's just invert that. Turn off our overlays. You can see now. I play that through that our finger is being cut out. And let's see what happens when I render that. Cool. If I wanted to add a little bit of edge softness to that, I can do. Just come to my finger mid, go to the edge properties, and set my edge width. And you can see on my outline there. Got a little bit softer. If I re render that now, you can see the softness working. So, all that's left for us to do now is just to roto those two fingers and use the adjust track on the last few frames. Just the last two frames, just to stop that screen from sliding upwards. But you know how to do that because we've seen it done before. The last thing I'm going to show you is how we get this out now. And it's in fact, it's exactly the same the last time we did the uh, screen insert. So we can either export these out as a rendered clip. Cool, let's hit cancel on that. And the other way of doing it, if we're using the Mocha plugin, is to do it directly within the plugin. So we come out of the plugin, go to our module renders, and hit on render there. Cool, now a good way, if I um, just bring this up to video two for a second and come into my footage and put a copy of my screen underneath. If I have my module set to insert cutout now, so it's just doing the cutout. If I did need to do any color correction that needed to be um, animated, then I can do that on the clip that's only got the insert on. So for example, let's set a keyframe there and make this look really nice. Lovely, let's render that out. There you go, lovely. So we've taken a good look at the insert module within Mocha Pro and used the compositing, warping, feathering, and transfer options to create our more advanced screen insert, including using holdout mats from other layers. In the next exercise, it's the turn of the remove module to show how we can effortlessly remove stray items in our shot. But that's coming in exercise 10.